Hey guys, it's Custom Miller Tech here, back with another video, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you an unboxing and configuration of this Ubiquiti Unify Security Gateway. This is the USG model, and uh, it came out within, I think, the last year, and so I just wanted to show you guys the setup of this. If you guys checked out my last video, you should know that I also installed the Switch 8 and the Cloud Key. So I'm just adding this security gateway in just to make a all-around ubiquity system and so then everything works together and I don't have to worry about using different products. So I'm going to be replacing my router with this. So let's get on to the unboxing. Okay, so here we have the box. It's pretty plain on the outside. On the back it just says the features and what's inside of it. And the sides are pretty much the same. So let's take off this, set it aside. Inside the box you will find a quick start guide and then you'll find the actual security gateway itself. This is entirely metal. I thought this would be plastic, but this is entirely made of metal. It's got some heft to it too, which is surprising. Then there's also the power cable that plugs into the power adapter. There's that and then some mounting hardware. And that is all for in the box. So, to this actual security gateway itself. First off, the first thing that I noticed is when they first originally made this, they actually had the Ethernet ports were actually Council, WAN 1, LAN 1, and then VoIP 1. So that was for voice over IP, but they've now changed it to WAN 2 or LAN 2. So then you can actually have this as a failover, like WAN 2 port, or you can just have it as a second LAN port. So that's pretty cool. So let's now get into replacing my router and then configuring it. Okay, so the router that I'm actually going to be replacing and putting this in in place of is the Netgear R7000, if anybody was wondering. To install this, it's pretty simple. Just grab your old Ethernet WAN and LAN lines from your old router and plug those into the new corresponding ports on the Unify USG. Then after that, you're gonna have to give this some power. So grab the power connector, obviously, and I'm gonna plug this in. So after you've done that, after a couple of seconds, you should be able to see a light come on right here. So now that we've got this all plugged in, Let's get into the configuration of this, so then we can can show you how to set it up. All right, so in order to configure the USG, you're gonna have to know how to use the Unify controller software, and so you have to have that either installed on your computer or onto a cloud key, which I showed in the last video, which I've already said. So I'm gonna open my controller, and then you're gonna have to adopt this, which is pretty straightforward and simple. Log in really quickly. After logging in, as you guys can see right here, this is what my view right now looks like, which soon, these right here should show up as green also because I'll be having the Unify Security Gateway. So you're gonna have to go to your devices, and then from here, you'll find the USG right here, and it says pending adoption. So you just click on over here, adopt. And as you can see up here, it says adopting, and then the MAC address that I'm blurring out. All right guys, so if you guys were paying close attention, the last time that you guys saw me was actually like 20, 30 minutes ago, and that's because I was having some issues with IP addresses. And uh, I just wanna mention that if you are adopting the USG, then you need to make sure that your controller, it's on the same IP address spectrum, or I don't know what the technical term is, but what I have my controller as, as you can see, I have it set as 10.0.0.5, and it really needs to be on 192.168.1. something. So, because when the USG, like, first connects, it has the default IP address of 192.168.1.1. So, you need to make sure that your cloud key or whatever your controller is, is on the same IP address as that. So uh, now that I have it connected, it's now finally connected. So something that you're gonna wanna do is, I'm gonna do this so I don't have to blur out so much stuff. You can change the alias to whatever you want. So I'm gonna just name it Gateway. You save, so original I know. And now that that has saved, you're gonna wanna go and make sure that you update your USG. So for me, it shows that I have one, or an upgrade here, so just click on upgrade, click on confirm, and now it says upgrading gateway. So it'll just go through the process of upgrading. It shouldn't take too long, it'll probably be about 10 to 15 minutes, but 
could be shorter. Depends on how far the firmware has to jump. So yeah, as you can see right now, it's just upgrading and I'll get back to you guys once this is done. All right, so now that we are finally connected, once again, that only took about four or five minutes, which surprised me. That was shorter than what I was expecting. But now that it is connected, you can see that it figured out the correct IP address, like I was talking about earlier, that is what it should be set as, which is 10.0.0.1. And if you're a person interested in the configuration, you can configure this through the settings and then go to routing and firewall. And then under firewall, you can adjust different things like the ports that you have open and stuff like that. You can change static routes, which is like if you want a static IP address to some device on your network, you could do that. Um, and yeah, it's pretty limited with uh, what you can do. But the coolest part about it, which you probably shouldn't be purchasing this just for that, but on the dashboard, this is what my dashboard now looks like. It'll show me constant updates of all the data through my network. Now it has the WAN port showing up as green, as you can see as that did not previously, and you can even have it set to run speed tests periodically, but I don't think I have that turned on right now, but if you click on speed test, this is what it does. It just runs like a speed test, like if you were running it on um, speedtest.net, the speed itself is much higher. Like we typically don't have 45 megabits per second, but you know, pretty good. So anyways guys, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you liked this video and would like to see my other video, maybe learn about how my networking setup works some and maybe how to configure the switch and the cloud key, make sure to check that video out. Um, also, if you liked these types of videos, make sure to let me know down in the comments below so that I can know to make more networking videos like this in the future. But yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. If you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe by clicking that button below, even if you're on mobile. If you'd like to see my last video, that should go up there, and the uh, networking video should be down there. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. See you guys in the next video. Peace.